After months of delay, Cyberpunk 2077 is finally here. So, for today's video, we're gonna try out the game with what we have in the lab, what cars lying around, we just pick up everything and give it a run. So, this video is about the performance for NVIDIA cards. Now, when I say NVIDIA cards, I mean all the NVIDIA cards we have lying around. So, in this test, we will be using what we have, starting from the GTX 10 series, GTX 16 series, RTX 20 series, and the latest RTX 30 series. Yes! For the test system, we will be using our Intel test bench due to the fact that we are lacking of the new Ryzen 5000 series at the moment. But the 10th gen Intel CPU we're using is an i9-10900K, which is pretty decent for most of the new titles nowadays. That includes the new Cyberpunk 2077. Now we have played the game for quite some time since the official launch and there are actually updates coming after you know some complaints from the community. So the test we are doing here we are using the latest NVIDIA driver which is 460.79 version and game version 1.04 So that's pretty much for the introduction and let's cut that short and dive right into the performance Starting off with the RTX 30 series Now, you might notice a gap in between the 3090 and 3070 because we don't have an RTX 3080 during the test so you might miss out on that a little bit but looking at the performance of the RTX 3090 and 3070 you might be able to get some idea of how it performs there but we'll try our best to include that in the future if we manage to get our hands on one again Starting off with the 4K performance we can see that even the most powerful graphics card NVIDIA has to offer at the current time the RTX 3090 is struggling quite a bit, I would say, even without RT and DLSS. So, at this point of time, I will recommend you to go with DLSS enabled if you really want to enjoy 4K with the RTX 30 series card. Though, it can be quite challenging as well if the card is not as powerful as the 3090. But, when we switch to DLSS quality mode, we can see that all the three cards here is still struggling quite a bit but at least it's playable with ray tracing enabled now i should let you guys know that our ray tracing settings is on ultra as well so that figures if you want to play with ray tracing with slightly better frames you might want to lower it to high or perhaps medium depending on the kind of system you're having right now Switching on to DLSS performance mode, we can see that the RTX 3090 is actually performing very well with an average 60 frames per second and above. Now, this is the settings which NVIDIA use in one of the benchmarks they've shown in the recommended settings for Cyberpunk 2077. While you might lose a little bit on the graphics quality when you switch to performance mode, but it's pretty much negligible as compared to the earlier days we've seen on games such as Battlefield. With the LSS performance mode, you will barely notice any kind of graphics reduction if you're moving a lot because you won't even look at the surroundings when you are focusing on a very intense fight or chase. Now, in case if you're wondering, just how taxing the ray tracing can be in Cyberpunk 2077. Well, here are the numbers for your reference. For ray tracing ultra without any DLSS enabled, you can see that even the RTX 3090 is struggling very hard, let alone the lower tier 3070 and 3060 Ti. So this actually shows that how important DLSS is when it comes to games with ray tracing features. And if that's not enough, we also tested the games with ray tracing cycle mode. With cycle ray tracing enabled, 
you can see that the performance number drops even more without DLSS. So with DLSS enabled, whether quality mode or performance mode, you can see that games will be playable when it's enabled. That really helps a lot for games with ray tracing nowadays, not just the game we've tested currently. So if you're playing other games with ray tracing features, such as the new Watch Dogs Legions, or perhaps Call of Duty, or even other games, DLSS is something that's indispensable at the current time. So now you've seen the performance numbers for 4K resolution, it's not hard to tell that if you're not using a 3090, you might as well just forget about playing the game at 4K resolution. Well, unless you're willing to lower the settings even more, though that's not really recommended because it will somewhat affect your overall gaming experience. Moving down to 1440p, it's definitely something that the 3090 can handle without breaking a sweat. So if we look at both the RTX 3070 and RTX 3060 Ti, the game is way more playable at this resolution using both cards. Now, if you're using non-RT, the game is pretty much playable, but it's basically the same situation as before. You will not be able to get the average 60 FPS on 1440p with both the RTX 3070 and 3060 without DLSS. Unless you're willing to lower the settings to perhaps high or medium, then you'll be able to get that, you know, recommended FPS. With DLSS enabled, you can see that the game is way more playable. Though we are actually using ultra settings, just to remind again, you can actually lower it to perhaps high without sacrificing too much on the graphics quality, yet still be able to enjoy a decent frame rates on the game. As for 1080p, well, the 30 series cast is just so powerful and even the current lowest end, which is the 3060 Ti, is an equivalent or better than the previous gen RTX 2080 Super. So if you're still rocking on a 1080p monitor, you won't be facing any issues with any of the RTX 30 series cards at all. As for those of you who are still rocking on an RTX 20 series cards, well, it's still a very powerful graphics card that can still handle quite a few new titles even to this day. But it's a bad news for you if you want to play Cyberpunk at 4K resolution. Because if we look at the numbers here, yes, we struggle quite a lot with the benchmark on 4K. And the numbers is telling us that it's just too much for the RTX 20 series cards to handle and you should just forget about playing Cyberpunk on 4K resolution if you're using an RTX 20 series card. 1440p is definitely way much playable for the RTX 20 series cards because with DLSS enabled, the game is actually very playable with a very decent frame rate. Though you are actually limited to the more powerful RTX 2080 Ti, 2080 Super, and 2070 Super, and if you're rocking on the previous RTX 2080 or 2070, yes, it might be able to handle it. But because we don't have the card with us, we can't really confirm whether it will work as intended. As for the 2060 and 2060 Super, well, things aren't looking that great if you want to play the game at ultra settings. You might have to lower it to perhaps medium or even turn off ray tracing in order to enjoy the game. For 1080p, yes, it's definitely something all the RTX 20 series cards can handle. But if you're rocking on the more powerful 2070 Super Above variant, well, you might just want to stick with 1440p for a better graphics and game experience. Because this resolution, it's more of the thing for the RTX 2060 Super and 2060. Both cards will be able to get a pretty decent frame rates with DLSS performance enabled and RT high or medium, depend on what kind of system you're rocking on. Okay, so that sums up our performance test for the RTX series cards. What about the GTX cards? The one that doesn't come with dedicated tensor and RT cores to handle the ray tracing, you know, taxing performance. Yes, 
you can definitely play the game without ray tracing but you are losing the experience which nvidia wants to present to the gaming community but yeah the game is still playable even without those kind of features so let's take a look at how the gtx 16 series will perform now for the gtx 16 series yes we are having a very similar situation as the rtx 30 series cards we don't have the full lineup but we do have uh, pretty decent cards for the lineup which will probably be able to let you know how the game will perform on the gtx 16 series and since the gtx 16 series doesn't have any super high-end models to begin with well you can pretty much forget about 4k and 1440p with this series and i'll say 1080p is a much more reasonable resolution to go for if you are rocking on any of the gtx 16 series card though that's kind of limited to perhaps the 1660 above because 1650 and 1650 super well it's not powerful enough to handle the game at even medium settings if you're looking for the 60 fps gaming experience as for the model like gtx 16 60 or above well you might be able to get away with high settings but it also depends on what kind of cpus you are rocking on for our case well we will be able to get roughly 50 to 60 average frames depends on the situation but if you're really going after for the 60 fps gaming experience well you might have to go with medium settings or perhaps tinker with other of the settings and end up with a custom preset of your own that depends on well how you want to get your game running and finally for the gtx 10 series cards now it's still quite powerful even until today and even i myself are using the gtx 1080 even until today though i might consider changing to the new rtx 30 series card if if i manage to get myself one for the performance well same story as previously 4k is just too much for the gtx 10 series to handle regardless of what kind of settings you're going for 4k is definitely not playable at all on the 10 series because even if you're using a gtx 1080 ti 4k is still too much for it to handle and if we move down to 1440p well uh, you might be able to get away with the 1080 ti because the rest of it is still pretty much unplayable if you're looking for the 60 fps gaming experience and with that being said that leads us to 1080p so in my opinion 1080p is well the only resolution you can place the game smoothly with a gtx 10 series cards though not all the cards can tackle the game on ultra settings so if we look at the graphs here we can actually see that 1080 Ti is the only card in the GTX 10 series that's able to handle Cyberpunk at ultra settings while being able to maintain that 60 FPS gaming experience which most gamers will want to experience. And if we lower down the graphics settings to high, well, from the list we can see that only GTX 1080 is barely able to catch up with that 60 FPS gaming experience though it's recommended to well lower the graphics settings even more perhaps to medium if you really want to get the 60 fps on the gtx 1080 and as for the rest well cards like gtx 1070 ti gtx 1070 and gtx 1060 will struggle a lot if you go with high settings and even on mediums not all of them are able to keep up with you know the usual 50 fps gaming experience with which most of you are looking for and you might have to end up with the low settings as for gtx 1060 well frankly to say even low settings will not get you that 60 fps gaming experience and you might want to consider going even lower on the resolution though that depends on whether you are willing or not to sacrifice that much just to play the game so from this test we can pretty much get a better idea on how all these cards can perform when it comes to the latest title cyberpunk 2077 and there are a few conclusions we can go with 
for the game and all these cards which is if if you want to play the game with the best settings on 4k well the only card you can go for right now is perhaps the RTX 3090 because you will need all the horsepower you can get if you really want to enjoy the game at its best settings and if you still want to play the game at a very decent graphics without sacrificing too much on the quality well the RTX 3080 is still a very good choice to go for though you might not be able to get the same effect as you can get on the RTX 3090 because obviously it's a way more powerful card to begin with though getting a 3080 is probably the best for your wallet if you have a very limited budget for your upgrade as for the 3070 and 3060 ti as of now 1440p and 1080p is probably the best you can go for if you really want to enjoy the game with decent frame rates now as for those of you who are still rocking on the rtx 20 series cards well 4K is definitely out of the question because there's no way for all this RTX 20 series card to handle this kind of taxing performance. If you're using the RTX 2070 Super or above models, well, you might be able to get away with perhaps 1440p. Though you will have to lower down the settings depends on the capability of your card. As for 2060 Super and 2060, well, your best bet is probably 1080p or perhaps just turn off ray tracing completely and for the rest of those who are using a card without dedicated RT and tensor cores we have quite a few examples like the GTX 16 series and older GTX 10 series <sighs> I'll say your only bet is probably 1080p because anything beyond that is just too much for this card to handle. Now, other than knowing how all these cards will perform on this title, this also leads us to the idea of how important DLSS is when it comes to the newer titles, especially when developers are slowly implementing ray tracing into their games. With more ray tracing game titles coming up, DLSS is definitely something that is indispensable in the future. Well, if you really enjoy ray tracing, the LSS is definitely something you will not want to miss out if you want to get decent gaming experience without losing too much on the performance because it really helps. Now, compared to the previous old version DLSS we've tried in the past, Nvidia did improve it a lot until DLSS 2.0, which we can actually select between quality and performance. And in case if you're wondering, Nvidia is still continuously working on DLSS and we can really see games that are actually using DLSS 2.1 in their games. Yes, not just DLSS 2.0 but DLSS 2.1 as well. Though we can't really list out all the games that are currently having these new updates but the reason Wolfenstein Youngblood we've tested shows that they are implementing the new DLSS 2.1 patch to their games which will really help with improving the performance without losing too much on the graphics and sometimes it even improves the graphics performance depends on the game so to wrap things up I must say that ray tracing games is getting more relevant nowadays and you can definitely expect to see more games with ray tracing features coming in the future so at the time being, ray tracing DLSS might not be relevant to some of you and it's probably not so necessary at the time if you don't really care about all these fancy graphics. As for those of you who are really into fancy graphics and of course better gaming experience, well, ray tracing is definitely something you will have to face in the future and getting an RTX card or perhaps other competitor cards that offers the same features is something you can avoid. And yeah, this is a pretty lengthy video but I hope you guys find the information we presented just now useful. And if you have different graphics card which is not in our list and rocking the game nicely with your custom settings, you can let us know in the comment down below. So that's all I have to say today and I'll see you guys in the next video.